Joining me now is Jay Seculo. He is of the American Center for Law and Justice and author of the book, Rise of ISIS, A Threat We Can't Ignore. Jay, thank you so much for being here. Uh, your book scared me. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> it was a, a very well done. This, um, tell us a little bit about, because ISIS, this is a group that Americans have are, aren't really familiar with. We have, I, I, I've, you know, uh, for the past 10, 15 years, all of us, we've been hearing Al-Qaeda, Taliban, Al-Qaeda, Taliban, uh, Hamas, Hezbollah, and then yeah. all of a sudden we have ISIS. And then, Jay, we all went to bed thinking that, okay, we're going to go and bomb ISIS. That was the president's strategy. And then we took a pit stop and we went after the Khorasan group. So uh, who is ISIS? What uh, are they? Uh, how, how dangerous are they to the United States? Well, ISIS, first of all, it, you know, it, it was part of al-Qaeda. It was mm -hmm. al-Qaeda in Iraq. And they were so violent in their approach, mostly because they were killing other Muslims. But they were, you know, the brutality was so lethal that even Osama bin Laden decided to kick them out. So they leave uh, AQI, al-Qaeda in Iraq. They're no longer that. And the guy, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, now known as Caliph Ibrahim, declares the Islamic State in Syria and Iraq, which they now, then they called ISIL, which mm -hmm. included the Levant, which was the greater Middle East, including Israel. Right. Now they just call themselves the Islamic State. Really dangerous because where al-Qaeda operated in the caves, in the shadows, uh, maybe had 3,000 operatives. You know, the reports indicate that um, ISIS could really have closer to 40,000. If you put those 40,000 troops, which is what they have, together with groups like Hamas and Hezbollah, you'd have 100,000 troops in the region. Pretty wow, dangerous. that is incredibly dangerous. Uh, and, and this, you know, you, you mentioned that they broke off. They, they were sort of a splinter group of al-Qaeda. It's amazing to me that Osama yep. bin Laden, the mastermind behind 9-11, thinks that these guys are too barbaric. I didn't realize, Jay, that there were stages of, you know, a, a, a Dante's Inferno of terrorism yeah. here. That's pretty, that's pretty but frightening. But evidently there, there are, at least there was for Osama bin Laden when he was on this earth. Right. Uh, here's the situation, though, and you, you asked about the lane level of danger. I, I presented these uh, papers at Oxford University this summer in a class and a program dealing with this, and the tutor that was in charge of the program, the, the Oxford professor, who was a, a, a left of center guy. I mean, he's a guy that believes, you know, that all these parties can negotiate and work everything out. When it came to ISIS, though, he said this. He agreed with me, he, but he said, I said we need to eliminate them, destroy them. He said, crush them. So that's a guy from the left of center. That, and he's a guy that was wow. an Iranian national, left during the Iranian revolution. So what we've got is a systematic, this is what you have with ISIS, a systematic approach to terror that al-Qaeda did not really have. I mean, al-Qaeda al -Qaeda well planned their attack of 9-11, but they were not as systematic and not as open and forthright. You know, we see those videos of the beheadings and we're repulsed. Remember, they're using those as recruiting tools and unfortunately successfully. Yeah. There are more Muslims serving with ISIS than there are in Her Majesty's Armed Forces in England. That's how bad this is. Wow, very bad indeed. And I read one of the d other differences between ISIS and Al-Qaeda is the war chest. They have a lot of money. What is it, somewhere around, I've read anywhere from between two to six million dollars. Is it a week, a month that they're raking in? They're, they're getting about a million and a half dollars uh, a day oh, uh, from oil. And it looks like Turkey is the main accomplice to getting this oil on the black market. They have two billion dollars in assets, and we, and we go through this in great detail in, in the book yes. Rise of ISIS. And I'll, I'll tell you something: we, we just found out today that the book uh, debuted as number three on the uh, will be coming in the future New York Times uh, bestsellers list for ebooks. It's only out in ebook right now. It comes out in hard uh, uh, paperback in the middle of October. But people are really getting this uh, for precisely what you're saying: is when you look at the number of troops, the amount of assets they control, the radioactive material that they control, and U.S. weapons that they control. It's a threat we haven't seen. In the war on terror, we've never seen a threat like this. Yeah, they may be, they, I mean, they may be some backwater terrorist group, but they definitely have the funding of, you know, well, like you were saying, a United Kingdom. They definitely have the, the foot soldiers of a United Kingdom, even in greater numbers. This is a formidable threat. So, I mean, in, in terms of taking out the Islamic State, in terms of taking out ISIS, I mean, obviously, yeah. at this point, you would need ground troops, but how do you stop this money flow? That's the big thing because you can take out they're just going to keep coming in they'll just replace their head guys you got to stop the money how yeah you do have to stop the money and choking off the assets should be, should be part of this overall strategy look i mean you've got allies of ours supposedly cutter uae some of these other gulf states 
that are actually funding ISIS. I mean, and you got this, you know, bizarre, they're, they're the same, ongoing the same Sunni Shia are, conflict, and now we're hoping that we've got it looks like Sunni allies, so to speak, that are going to go after a Sunni ISIS group. Here's the problem: why you got you're right where you have to choke off the money because right. once you choke, choke off the money, it stops. The problem otherwise is they metastasize as far right. as if we don't have boots on the ground, they're just going to metastasize. They may be called different names a year from now, but it'll be the same threat and same problem. You choke off the money, stop the flow of funds, tell our NATO ally Turkey, knock it off now, stop yeah. it, because they're really propping this up. Uh, we've got it. The president has to be. He was. I thought he was. You know, fairly strong in his UN speech today, and was tough on the Muslim world to say you got to fix this, and you, you can't blame the Israelis for this one. Right. But uh, it's got to be a lot more than rhetoric. It's got to be go after the money, shut that off, bomb them, troops on the ground. It may be the Kurds, maybe the Peshmerga, maybe others. We're going to have to do that, and you've got to crush this threat. Last quick thing, Jay. We don't even we can't even trust yep. our coalition members because some of the people that you mentioned that were essentially right. f uh, 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 making this possible, they're part of the quote unquote coalition that's supposed to stop this. Yep. We don't even know who we can trust who is considered an ally. Benjamin Disraeli said the Middle East, the intrigue of the Middle East is a lifelong difficulty, and I think it's now intergenerational. Wow. But we have to realize this is, this is like the 30-year war here. This isn't something we're going to wake up and there's going to be Osama bin Laden's dead and al-Qaeda's on the run. I mean, that didn't work, and it certainly did not work. In fact, as I said, these things tend to metastasize. Right. So we've got our real allies have to be acting like allies, and our, even our fake allies better start <laughs> acting like allies and, and get with this and knock the flow of funds off and knock this group out. The beheadings are just the beginning of the tragedy, and we put that in there. Um, one of my co-authors, David French, who served in Iraq, those stories are what he saw as a judge advocate general in the Army uh, in Iraq. So he knows what we're dealing with, and, uh, and, and all of us have had experience in the Middle East, vast experience. So this is a serious threat. That's why we wrote the book, and that's why we're getting the message out. Yeah, absolutely. Jay Sekula, thank you so much for being on with us uh, this afternoon. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me.